Thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, my name is Alex Cohen. I'm one of the principals here at Liberty SBF. And today we're gonna be focusing on hospitality financing. Uh, I'm joined today by an, a, a few members of our core team, um, Alex Prombaum, our head of credit and also a principal here at Liberty, uh, Kevin O'Shea, one of our senior credit managers, and Warren Rakra, our national sales director. Um, we're gonna be focusing on hospitality financing for our presentation today um, as a quick um, side uh, advertisement, we're going to be attending the AHOA conference next week in Dallas. Um, so hopefully we'll have an opportunity to meet uh, with some of the folks that are that are joining us today. Uh, we're going to be sponsoring that event. We'll have a, a, an exhibit booth and we're going to be we're going to be sponsoring some of the events next week at the conference. So, um, you know, certainly look forward to meeting everyone in person next week, anyone who will be attending the AHOA conference. And if uh, it makes sense for us to schedule some time to meet, uh, please do reach out to Warren Rakra, uh, who's on this presentation today and who will be organizing our meeting efforts while we're on site next week um, in Dallas. Um, so with that being said, why don't we jump into the um, core of the presentation here. Um, Lon, if you wanna just jump to the next slide. Great, thank you. So just as a, a quick overview on Liberty SBF, um, we were founded in 2011. Uh, so we've been lending through two business cycles. Um, we have lent over $2 billion um, in, in closed loan volume. Um, and you know, a, a team that has worked together for two cycles um, over 10 years um, and, and, a, and a strong management team uh, with core competencies and originations, credit, closing, and loan servicing. Um, Lon, if you want to jump to the next slide. Excellent, thanks. So, so kicking right off, you know, wanted to talk a little bit about the value propositions that our lending platform provides to the hospitality community, both for owners and borrowers, as well as our referral source community. Um, of brokers and, and lenders. Um, number one, you know, I think one of the big things that we want to focus on today is that prior to, the, to what this platform was offering pre-COVID, uh, we've expanded our offerings quite a bit as we've launched back into core lending here. Um, and I think one of the big ideas that we want to focus on is the fact that we are able to offer different types of executions, um, including Roundup construction and opportunities, value add, transitional opportunities that have uh, you know a larger business plan component um, rather than just stabilized assets. So you know across our platform, we offer SBA, conventional, and bridge financing for hotel owners and for referral sources who are sourcing debt on behalf of the the owner and borrower community. Um, because we, we focus on SBA lending, we're off, we're, we are able to offer higher leverage, low cost financing options to the hospitality industry, including SBA 504 con, uh, construction uh, and, and PERM financing. Um, and you know, I think we probably have one of the you know, sort of deepest offerings of any lender out there you know, in terms of heavy business plan type opportunities, as well as, you know, high leverage, low cost financing options for stabilized uh, uh, businesses. You know, obviously the hospitality industry has been affected by COVID uh, and the associated shutdowns. Um, so we can talk a little bit in our, in our section on underwriting in terms of what we're looking for um, from, a, from a cash flow analysis standpoint, given the disruptions to cash flow, the disruptions to business operations that have occurred in the last two years. That being said, you know, as we've begun to reopen, although there are certainly some, some you know, potential issues coming down with, with the Delta variant, et cetera, um, but we do believe that the hospitality industry will um, come back and will come back in a very significant way. Um, and there are certain types of assets and opportunities that we are currently lending on. And we'll talk a little bit more about that during our underwriting process uh, section. Um, 
we're able to combine real estate financing with working capital solutions, um, including 7A financing uh, for hotel owners. Uh, and, and oftentimes when we're providing stabilized fixed rate financing, we're able to offer working capital solutions alongside that. And um, you know, those are things that we can talk about on a deal by deal basis um, as you present opportunities to us and, and Warren works with you um, to package and, and submit those deals into the shop. Um, I'm not gonna go into it um, today in a, in a really specific way, but I do suggest that you contact Warren to talk about our referral program. We are able to offer different types of incentives to our referral source community for sending us deals that we close. Uh, we're able to offer direct incentives on a deal by deal basis. We're able to offer volume discounts to individual referral sources and for large accounts, that provide flow relationships to our platform, we're able to offer account-based discounts. So please do reach out to Warren if you have questions on how to become a um, approved referral source to our platform. Juan, if you wanna to jump to the uh, next slide. Excellent, so just as a, as a recap, we offer SBA financing both for construction as well as stabilized properties. We offer conventional financing primarily for stabilized assets. We offer bridge financing uh, and we have construction um, financing available for certain scenarios. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about that um, in our underwriting uh, presentation as well. Um, in terms of the remainder of the presentation, um, I'm gonna have Alex Prombaum, who runs our credit group, walk us through a couple of deal examples for transactions that we recently closed Following that presentation, Warren Rockra is going to walk through how to submit a deal to the platform and what that process looks like um, on a very high level. And then Kevin O'Shea is going to follow up and walk through specifically what we need from a underwriting standpoint to screen a deal. Um, and based on some of the trends that are, that are occurring in the industry today, uh, focusing on what types of opportunities are going to be a fit here at Liberty and, you know, what may not be a fit, um, you know, based on, on the current operating environment. So I'm going to kick it over to Alex Prombaum to walk through a couple of recent deal closing um, examples um, and uh, we'll take it from there. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Hi, I'm Alex Prombaum. I'm the head of credit underwriting at Liberty, one of the founders of the company. Um, you know, one of the benefits of that, when Liberty was started in 2012 is it was really coming out of the last recession and we had, had an opportunity to do quite a bit of hotel lending you know, over the last decade and it, really in all different parts of the cycle. So we funded hotel loans coast to coast. We've, we've done SBA loans, we've done conventional loans, we've done CMBS loans, we've done bridge loans. Um, we're very comfortable with the asset type um, and it's an asset type that we you know, like to do, you know, in the right situations. And this situation that we're in right now, coming out of the, you know, the 2020 COVID dip, you know, is a situation that we are actually very interested in lending into hotels because um, you're having a number of acquisitions happen um, and buyers who have the opportunity to buy underperforming hotels at prices um, that make sense. You know, the, the market had had pretty much a decade of, of unabated, Rev par, record rev par growth each year. So prices were getting a little bit out of control. So there's been a little bit of a, a little bit of a reset there. But at the same time, given the fact that the economy started coming back in 2021, we've started to see, um, we've started to see enough track record on some of these assets who had a tough time last year to get comfortable underwriting in place cash flow and doing permanent financing on them. So, you know, that's generally how we review hotels right now. I wanted to show a couple examples of loans that we've done in the past recently, one conventional, um, one SBA to show some different scenarios and, and how we look at those. So Juan, if you wanna to go to the first one. Um, this is an example of an SBA 504 refinance. Um, this was a borrower in Salt Lake City, Utah, who had bought an underperforming, an underperforming property um, and executed a pretty extensive PIP um, two years prior to us providing financing. Um, because he was able to execute his business plan, 
um, and increase performance at the asset in line with what he was trying to do, it made him, he was, his debt, because it was um, permanent debt, which he took out to purchase the property, um, was eligible for SBA 504 refinance. Um, and, and therefore he was eligible for up to 85% loan to value financing. Um, in this case, that resulted in some pretty significant cash out on the property. We were able to provide him a million dollars of cash out with an 85% loan to value refinance, you know, as him rewarding his ability to execute his business plan. Um, it was also a pretty tight time frame because he had an opportunity to pay off his loan without prepayment penalty that he was trying to meet. So we came in, executed, worked with the CDC in Utah that we've closed um, a number of transactions with, a number of hospitality transactions with, um, and we were able to execute um, in under 60 days. We were able to get them approved for the million dollars of cash out. Um, and this borrower was so pleased that we've done now three transactions with him um, in the Southwest. Um, and I think this is a pretty good example of a way to use 504 um, to recapitalize an asset, get cash out from an asset. Obviously, it's a great tool as well, 504 for acquisitions, because you know there's no financing that's going to be as favorable from an LTV standpoint, no matter what other type of asset class, other type of lending or other type of loan you would get to buy a hospitality asset. If it's not SBA, it's going to be typically pretty conservative leverage, um, especially today. Um, and with SBA, you can get that max 85% loan to value. Um, and it's a wonderful tool. It's a reason why so many hotels are financed with SBA 504. We've done many um, over the course of our business. And you know we look forward to continuing to do that. Um, Lon, why don't we go to the next one? And before you jump into that next asset, uh, the next closed deal example, Alex, I think one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, we're hearing a lot about borrowers who have conventional long-term financing in place that are coming up on maturities. And as we know, the capital markets for hospitality financing right now is pretty choppy. You know, where, where you may have gotten 65% LTV, historically, we're seeing banks and, and conventional lenders either, you know, taking a pause in hotel lending holistically or limiting leverage. Um, you've got you know, a fairly negative bias within CMBS for hospitality right now. And you have a you know, significant amount of maturities that have either occurred. And you know, what we've seen in this cycle, unlike the last cycle, is that lenders are tending to work with borrowers and providing extension options. Um, but at a certain point, we're going to hit a maturity wall where borrowers, particularly hospitality borrowers, are going to need to finance. There may be a question of value on the refinance, and SBA 504 can provide a great refinancing tool because of that in inherent higher leverage um, availability. And so I think as a refinance tool, particularly at this point in the cycle, it's something that hotel owners should definitely be thinking about. It's something that brokers should definitely be thinking about as a way of helping your borrowers unwind their conventional financing at a maturity at a maturity um, in a time period where you know there's a lot of uncertainty in the industry generally, and, and valuations can be you know sort of skewed as a result of you know recent underperformance of these types of assets. Alex, that's a great point. The SBA 504 refi and SBA 504 acquisition are just wonderful tools right now um, in this market because of, you know, because of the re reasons that Alex said. And specifically, you know, we talk to lenders across all different parts of the market. And, you know, what we've heard for the most part is that lenders are either beginning to dip their toes back in the hospitality pool is something that we hear pretty frequently or just not ready at all yet. So the pool of lenders doing hospitality is still limited, especially with the choppiness surrounding COVID. You know, Liberty SBF, we feel very comfortable and confident in our ability to underwrite hospitality. 
use both conventional and SBA 504 loans to close those assets. We're actively pursuing them now. They have to be, you know, strong transactions. They have to make sense. Um, but it's something to, to keep in mind anytime you see a hospitality asset is that, you know, you have to work with lenders right now who are confident in executing in that space. Um, I'd like to give an example of a conventional loan. I think this is actually a very interesting one. Um, this is a Wyndham brand um, American um, in the Saint Minneapolis St. Paul MSA. Um, it's a very interesting deal because this was really um, part of a much larger transaction where a sponsor bought 17 bowling alleys um, as like a bowling alley roll up um, and used pretty pretty sophisticated structure of private equity and mezzanine debt to finance it. Um, and on one of the parcels where there was a bowling alley, there was also a hotel. And the equity partners and mez lenders in the transaction did not want to invest in hotels. And so the deal was that they were gonna have to peel this asset off from the other 17 bowling alleys um, within a year of buying it. Um, and so, because of the complex structure and how they bought it, it wouldn't, it's not a loan that would be eligible for SBA. Um, it had to be done conventionally. Um, so in this case, we were able to provide um, a 100% loan to cost, 60% loan to value loan to, fin to refinance it. it was, in a lot of ways, it was an acquisition as much as it was a refinance because our sponsors were acquiring it out of the pool, but they were also refinancing the capital that had been used to acquire it. So it was somewhat of a hybrid. Um, this was a transaction that was the sponsor's first hotel asset they'd ever purchased, um, which typically you know, is outside of our credit box. In this case, we were able to get comfortable with it because of the performance of the hotel, um, the management company they had chose to management, as well as they had some pretty significant net worth and liquidity um, to be able to support the transaction but it was their first hospitality property and we were able to finance that for them. Um, we liked this transaction as well because it was fresh off of PIP in the previous year. So it was new and fresh, you can see from the pictures, um, but it was complex. It was a complex transaction to structure. It was a comp complex um, transaction to close. And given all that, we were able to close it in less than 45 days and meet a pretty tight time frame because they had to have this done within a year of the original transaction. Um, I think that you know we've done a number of conventional loans in the 60 to 65 percent loan to value range, permanent loans. Um, I would say typically this one didn't. This was 100 percent loan to cost, but it but typically they they include cash out. Typically there's some reason why they can't go SBA or the borrower just is not seeking the leverage of SBA, one thing that commonly comes up why a borrower can't get SBA financing and would need to go a conventional route is because of the cap on SBA financing for single borrower. Um, for, for borrowers and sponsors that own a number of hotel or hospitality properties that have SBA financing on them, there is a cap of how much SBA guaranteed debt they can have. There's ways around that with different things like green projects and other things that you know, we can talk about on a case by case basis. But the overall theme is sometimes someone has maxed out their SBA eligibility and therefore they need a different type of financing um, to close a transaction. I think our conventional loan is an excellent loan for that. Very low fixed rate, good fast execution. And we've had a lot of success over the years using this product to finance hospitality. Yeah, and I think just to dig in a little bit more into some of those use cases, Alex, you know, what we see for hotel developers is that they will often use the SBA 7A program for smaller deals uh, on a 5 million or less development project, which is a floating rate structure, um, typically on, on, a, on a transaction like that priced at prime plus two and three quarters. So expensive floating rate debt, um, but well, you know, well structured from a leverage standpoint and, 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 and a tool that many hotel developers use, a financing tool, 7A, that is a financing tool that many developers use uh, when they're doing a ground up project. Um, a lot of times we'll see opportunities where a borrower has constructed the, the facility, they have executed their business plan in terms of getting it to stabilization. And they're now looking to refi out of that 
floating rate loan into a fixed rate conventional product. You know, in addition to the SBA cap on total dollars, there is also a restriction from using government guaranteed financing to refinance government guaranteed debt. So you cannot use a 504 loan, for example, which is a fixed rate vehicle inherently um, to refinance a floating rate 7A loan. And some of those rules, Alex, have been softened during the pandemic, but historically you never could. They've softened right. some of those rules, but historically you never could, you know, use a 504 to refinance a 7A. Right. And there's some restrictions on sizing that still, you know, remain in place where, you know, it, it may be inadvantageous to use SBA on SBA type, you know, refinancing for, for those types of scenarios. And, 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 and certainly as we get out of the recovery cycle, you know, we will, we will most likely see, you know, changes again to those back towards, you know, reverting back towards the mean of, of how t SBA typically operates and how the government typically, you know, looks at and, and views guaranteed financing or refinancing of, of existing guaranteed assets. So, and, there, and, and there's just also, there's just a reality that to have a, a loan product like this, an option like this, which, you know, our conventional loan looks a lot like an SBA loan, but it doesn't require the approval of the SBA but it maintains a lot of the benefits of the structure of SBA loans and that there is you know, not a whole lot of structure. Um, they can be closed very quickly. Um, borrowers- Covenant who, light. Covenant light. Borrowers who have you know, um, utilized SBA financing in the past are very comfortable with the structure and the process. And it's actually even much simpler than that and much faster than that. So we've had a lot of success with this product. It can be a great fit, especially for refinances, especially for assets that borrowers have owned for quite a while. We've provided a lot of cash out with this product. Um, and, you know, it could be a great tool, you know, in your arsenal if you're looking to, to, to finance, different ways to finance your, your clients' hotels. Um, and that's, that's, you know, I think those are two good examples. One of an SBA, one of a conventional loan. We've done a lot of hospitality financing um, and we're looking to continue to do that um, going forward. I'm happy to answer any questions. Now we're down the line about you know, how we look at hospitality. But in the meantime, Alex, I think I'll kick it over to Warren who can talk about our process, how to submitting loans. Perfect, great, thank you, Alex. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Warren Rocker. I run the sales team here at Liberty SBF. Um, today, we're going to be going over basically the process of getting sales coverage assigned to you here at Liberty SBF and also going through the process of getting a loan commitment from us. Um, the very first thing, very high level, you want to reach out to me. You have my email address right there, vrockera at libertysbf.com. Once you and I touch base, we will review your request. I will sign sales coverage very high level present the loan request. I might have some few questions initially on the property business sponsorship. We go have a 15, 20 minute conversation, collect some preliminary items, and I will give you a quote within 24 hours. If the quote is acceptable to you and your borrowers, we will then send out a complete loan application, which my counterparty, Kevin O'Shea, will be going over in depth for us to then work on getting a full commitment letter out to you within two business days, 48 hours. It's a deal, due diligence item list. Um, once again, I will have Kevin O'Shea run through those in high level um, in the next slide. Once we find out, I mean, once we send out the, um, the deal to credit, we review it, we send our commitment letter out to you. You then present the commitment letter to your borrower, sign it, get our deposit in. We will then start the closing process and ordering third-party reports and funding your deal within 30, 45 days. Typically what we do on a 504 basis is we get the commitment letter signed. We engage all third parties right away. We engage the CDC, set up a kickoff call, kickoff call, work through the credit memo, get all third parties in, review them, start legal, close them. Typically takes about 30, 45 days with um, SBA right now. However, it's taking a little longer. I would say 60 days for 504s and 45 days for conventional loans. Uh, with that said, I'll kick it over to Kevin O'Shea. Yeah, thanks, Warren. Hey, I'm Kevin O'Shea. I'm a senior underwriter here at Liberty. Just want to walk through from a high level our process from taking an initial deal submission in, issuing a quote, followed by an application to you, and then taking that loan through underwriting to close. Just before I get into that, um, I do just want to touch base on how we evaluate a loan application here at Liberty. 
we really take a holistic approach to underwriting and evaluate a deal um, from three key scenarios. Number one, property. So that's you know asset quality and location, as well as financial performance. Uh, number two, sponsorship. So sponsor experience in the industry and the market, as well as um, financial uh, metrics such as outside cash flow, as well as sponsor net worth and liquidity. And then finally, business plan, um, whether that's going to be a straight purchase or a refi, or whether there's some sort of business plan involving a PIP or a cash out component to the deal. And we sort of weigh the strengths and weaknesses of those three areas when we're evaluating and pricing a loan here at Liberty. So once you submit a deal to Warren in order to issue a quote, we wanna get some high level information on the transaction. Number one, you know, performance of the property itself. How has the hotel performed historically? Is the hotel currently stabilized? Are there some sort of short-term market forces that are um, causing the hotel to underperform in the market currently or is it a stabilized asset? Obviously, as we sit here in the middle of 2021, pretty much the entire industry has been affected by COVID. So typically what we're looking to see is strong performance pre-COVID. So that's you know, 17, 18, and 19 really. Most of the industry was negatively impacted in 2020, but uh, properties are starting to come back in 2021. So we're really looking to see strong performance prior to COVID and then clear trends of the asset sort of recovering from the impact of COVID-19 um, in the middle of 2021 and, and through the end of the year. Number two, what is the borrower's experience, you know, owning and operating hospitality properties? Do they have experience operating this asset type? Do they have experience operating you know, within the market and submarket, do they have experience operating the particular um, franchise flag that the subject property is operating under? Number three, if there is a business plan, you know, usually when we're talking about hospitality asset, that's that's talking about completing a PIP, whether it's a, a light refresh PIP to to update FF and E or if it's more of a heavier lift to completely remodel the assets. So if there's a PIP involved, you know, what is the borrower's experience completing PIPs? Have they done this before? Have they done this with the franchise that they're currently gonna be operating under? And then just some more details on the PIP, you know, what's the size of that and, and how long will it take to complete that business plan? So we know, you know, how to structure our loan. Once we have that information, we can issue a quote if those terms are acceptable to you, we'll look to move towards a more formal application. So Lana, if you want to go to the next slide, I'll walk through the additional information we need to issue a loan application or, or a commitment letter. Um, we call it a CCL here at, at Liberty. Lana, if you want to go to the next slide. So in order to issue a conditional commitment letter, we're going to need um, some additional information to really evaluate those areas that we're concerned with. So transaction information, you know, what transaction is this? Is it a purchase or a refi? Is it a straight purchase or refi? Or is there going to be some additional uses of funds, you know, primarily a PIP? If there is a PIP involved in the transaction, want to understand the budget and the timeline of that. Again, is it a smaller PIP to refresh FF&E or is it going to be a, a longer term, uh, heavier lift to remodel the hotel? We we'll want some property information. You know, it's primarily property financials. So, last three years and year to date PL. Again, we're looking at strong performance prior to COVID. Understand that there's going to be, you know, a major dip in 2020, but year to date through the first, you know, six months of 2021 now should sort of start to show trends returning back to pre COVID levels. We we'll want a star report just to understand the market a little bit better. Take a look at market levels from an ADR, occupancy, and RevPAR perspective, and you know, uh, evaluating the hotel's performance against its its competitive set over the last three years. And then finally, we're concerned with sponsorship. So, what type of experience do they have owning and operating hospitality properties in the market? And then we'll need some financial information on them to understand if they have any outside income that could support the cash flow on the deal 
as well as a personal financial statement to evaluate their personal net worth and liquidity. Once we have all that information, we can move towards issuing a more formal CCL um, to sign the deal up and get a deposit in so we can order third party reports and move through our underwriting process, which I'll walk through on the next slide, Lon, if you wanna move on. So once we get a signed commitment letter, we'll get in a deposit to order third party reports. At this point in the process, we've really collected all of the financial information from you that we'll need to underwrite and close this deal with the exception of third party reports. So Liberty will partner with national vendors to get your standard um, commercial real estate report. So that's appraisal, environmental report, and property condition assessment. If there is a PIP involved in the transaction, we'll partner with a third party engineering firm and get some additional reports to evaluate the budget and the contractor who will complete the work just to ensure that the budget makes sense and the contractor is the right shop to complete the job. We do look at ground up hospitality opportunities. So if we're looking at a ground up scenario, we'll also get a feasibility study, which will you know, really evaluate the market as it stands today and what the construction of the subject hotel will do to the market. And just make sure that the numbers um, pencil out and that the opportunity makes sense given supply and demand in the market. We'll also get construction progress monitoring and draw control reports to manage ongoing draws throughout the life of the PIT project. Once we get all those third party reports in, you know, it takes us about a week to finalize our credit memo and get credit committee approval. And then once we get credit committee approval, it will take about one to two weeks to close your transaction. And that's really what our process looks like from quoting a deal up front, issuing a commitment letter and taking it through underwriting all the way to close. And with that, I think I'll kick it back to you, Alex. Great, thanks, Kevin. And just you know, uh, to, to recap that whole process high level, if you are not currently talking to Warren um, or, or have been assigned sales coverage, please contact Warren Rockra. He will work with you directly on your deal submissions or assign you sales coverage. Typically, Warren and our sales team will, will receive in loan requests, they will We'll, we'll evaluate the high level transactional information and be able to provide you with a quote within 24 hours. If that quote is acceptable to you and the borrower, we'll provide you with a full underwriting list for screening, which Kevin reviewed in, in depth um, during this last section of the presentation. And we should be able to provide a commitment if it's a deal that we're looking to move forward with uh, within two to three business days. Um, and then once we receive a signed um, CCL and a deposit, we're off to the races and it's typically a 30 to 45 day close from there. We're seeing some delays as Warren mentioned on SBA 504 transactions. So it may be more like 45 to 60, but we are typically one of the fastest shops when it comes to submitting, underwriting and closing SBA 504 transactions. Um, one other thing I'd just like to really quickly recap is sort of where we are where we are focusing efforts within our product set. So first and foremost, SBA. Our bread and butter is providing SBA 504 loans, particularly within the hospitality industry. We can do ground up construction with SBA 504. Those deals are going to be evaluated, you know, with a lot of focus on sponsor experience and their ability to demonstrate having executed similar business plans in the past, as well as having the financial wherewithal and global cash flow to cover interest coverage during the construction period. SBA is a great vehicle for refinances that require higher leverage on stabilized assets. It can also be used for heavier business plan. And frankly, within the hospitality industry is our preferred vehicle for doing it is really the only vehicle we're using to do ground up construction is our preferred vehicle for deals that have larger capex or PIP components to them. We can provide conventional financing, particularly on refinances. It's a very interesting product. If you are, if you are capped on SBA dollars or you're refinancing out of an existing SBA loan, um, we can also provide bridge financing. Uh, although I would say 
on our bridge loans for hospitality deals specifically, we're going to be looking for less construction component to those business plans. We will look at deals where there is a PIP, particularly where it's more heavily focused on FF&E versus hardcore CapEx. Um, we can look at acquisitions where, where an experienced sponsor is looking to do a turnaround business plan. Um, but again, if, if there's going to be a heavy duty construction component to your loan request, our preference, particularly at this point in time in the cycle, is going to be doing it through an SBA 504 um, structure. Um, that being said, we do offer SBA, conventional, and bridge financing options for the hotel industry. And we're certainly you know, happy to evaluate your transaction, anyone's transaction on a case-by-case -case basis, and try to figure out the best and most appropriate structure for financing you know, those, those individual transactions. We appreciate everyone joining. As I mentioned, Warren is the best point of contact to evaluate deal transactions. And we look forward to seeing you next week at AHOA if you're gonna be joining uh, or attending, excuse me. And if not, we're happy to schedule some time over a call and Warren obviously is available to evaluate live transactions.